So I want to introduce my next speaker. Um, our next speaker is Dennis. He's a Boringa Engelheim PhD Fellow in Genetics and Genomics at Harvard University. He's also the co-founder of Nebula Genomics and a recipient of the German National Academic Foundation Fellowship. So welcome, Dennis, and uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Happy to be here and uh, telling you about what we're doing uh, at Nebula Genomics. So Preston already gave a great introduction uh, into some of the challenges that we're facing. And uh, I will be essentially telling you how we are trying to address uh, some of those challenges. So what we're trying to build uh, is essentially a, a platform uh, for generating, storing, sharing, and analyzing genomic data. Um, generation is an important part, uh, what probably is the most important part, because to date, uh, not much genomic data has been generated. If I asked uh, you the question, how many of you have sequenced your genome, I think very few would raise their hands, and that's a problem. Uh, since this, uh, this series is about AI, uh, I want to quickly kind of reference to AI and explain why we need a lot of data. Uh, what enabled uh, the advancement of AI in different fields, for example, like machine vision over the past uh, years, was among other things the uh, uh, availability of a lot of data to learn from. So for example, most of you have in your pocket a smartphone with a camera, and this uh, ubiquitous uh, um, availability of cam digital cameras has resulted in, in a lot of photos out there that have been used then by researchers to train their machine vision algorithms. And for genomics to also benefit from AI, we essentially also need a lot of data to learn from. Uh, and uh, if, we, if we had that data, we would, could then uh, uh, identify correlations uh, between genetics and medical conditions, for example, even if they are very small. So the smaller the correlation or the more complex the correlation, such a correlation between genetics and traits is, the more data we need uh, to identify it. So generating more genomic data is really uh, one of the core goals of nebula genomics. And the way we're trying to accomplish that is twofold, essentially by lowering the costs, or better to say, shifting the costs away from you, the consumers and patients, and, and shifting them to, to a third party that will essentially subsidize and pay your sequencing costs. And another concern that uh, some or many of you might have is actually privacy of your genomic, genomic data. And that's another issue that we're trying to address, which, have, which I will speak more about. And the ultimate goal is essentially to generate a lot of this data and make it available to, to researchers so that they can use it to better understand human genetics and develop new drugs from which in turn everyone will benefit. So that's uh, pretty much our mission, really generate a lot of data, make it, and make it available for researchers so that you can really enter uh, you know, an, an era of data-driven medicine mm -hmm and drug development and that we need to, uh, to, to you know, better outcomes for everyone. Uh, Preston has already showed you a version of that graph. I just want to bring it up again quickly because it's a, it's a very important one. Uh, I have here actually two different things combined. For one, the sequencing costs of, of sequencing a human genome. So uh, the first human genome was actually sequenced it, it, it took over 10 years to sequence it. It was finished in uh, early 2000s and it cost over $3 billion. Since then, the costs went down. Uh, and in 2018, we're actually already below uh, $1,000. And the costs are expected to decline to uh, you know, as little as $100 or even less uh, within the next few years. Um, and with that, uh, availability of affordable sequencing um, the, the kind of the interest, the, the industry interest in genomics has increased because it now became an option to actually use genomic data to um, for you know, business-related uh, matters. So pharma companies uh, 
biotech companies started increasingly getting into that space, for example, using genomic data to, um, to identify new uh, drug targets and also increasingly using genomic data in clinical trials to identify cohorts of patients that uh, who are likely to, to respond to, to, to the drugs that they are testing. Um, uh, so this is just a few deals from the past few years that kind of illustrate this industry interest in, in, in genomics. And we can, we can see based on that that it's kind of really taken off. We, we, have, we have many recent deals like UK Biobank uh, with their half a million uh, samples that they have collected and pharma companies uh, you know, pay, paying $100 million to sequence those samples. And recently we had a big deal between 23 and me and GSK where $300 million were paid to ask for access to genomic data. Um, but with all those opportunities, we are still uh, facing some challenges that we at Nimbio Genomics are trying to address. Um, the first one I already touched on, uh, data generation. Um, the costs also they have went down from three billion to less than one thousand. Um, this is like you know one thousand dollars is unfortunately still too much. Uh, considered it's considered to be too much by most people. So you know most people decide to buy rather a new iPhone for one thousand dollars and see in their own genomes. Um, and uh, we need to address it somehow. I mean this has several reasons. For one, surely is a lack of awareness of the opportunities, um, and also lack of understanding what's actually the difference between this one thousand dollar whole genome and, for example, what other companies that provide genotyping are doing. So, Preston explains the difference about the data sizes. That whole genome is really a six point four billion bases. Genotyping uh, is really only like five hundred thousand variants. So, most people are not aware of this difference. Um, and then don't understand why they will pay like you know ten times more for for whole genome sequencing. And another issue is uh, that we identified ourselves by conducting a survey, and other other surveys confirm that there are really privacy concerns that many people have, because um, many com personal genomics companies part of the business model is really to some extent uh, take ownership of their customers' data and then monetize it to uh, uh, to go to farm by the companies and. More and more people are feel you know uncomfortable about about this idea. Then another issue is difficult data access. Again, this is something Preston touched on already. Uh, to date, uh, a lot of genomic data that exists already. It's very little, but even that little data is quite fragmented. So if you're looking for particular genomic data set, there's no single place you can just go to and either or buy or access it. There are many private and public. Uh, genomic databases that you would need to you know, reach out to and many different people need to talk to get access to that data, which makes data acquisition very problematic for researchers. Uh, data size is a problem. Uh, if you're talking especially about whole genome data, uh, single genome is in like 200 gigabytes of raw sequencing data. And if, it's, if you're talking about you know, just acquiring 10,000 genomes and then just transferring the data, that's, that's not easy at all. There are regulatory restrictions. Uh, some countries are very sensitive when it comes to <coughs> laws regarding genomic data. For example, China is one of them. So in fact, they have laws that uh, prohibit any genomic data of Chinese citizens to leave China, which essentially makes it very difficult for any researcher outside of China to access this data. And other countries, like France, for example, also have quite strict regulations. And of course, there are also those privacy risks that we touched on already. People are quite, uh, quite uh, not very willing to share the data. Also, many people do want to help research. Um, and uh, third point, data management is still inefficient. Genomic data is big. You need to store it somewhere. You need to organize it somehow. You need to analyze it reproducibly, and so on. Um, so this is continuation of this problem that illustrates uh, those points. So what we have today is the system through which most of the genomic data is generated looks essentially like that. You have individual uh, data owners, which can be the like consumers or patients. Um, and you know, to date, it's, it's, it's most genomic data is generated, it's coming now from consumers, and it's generated by personal genomics companies that have their private genomic databases. And those, those consumers essentially pay those companies 
uh, sending a sample for sequencing to receive back the results. Uh, but those companies then try to retain the data and then monetize it in different forms to data buyers. And this model introduces uh, several problems for both data owners and data buyers. Uh, for data owners, essentially means that if you want to get sequenced, you will have right now to pay the whole costs. Uh, then in many, uh, at least in some cases, you will just, you know, to some extent lose uh, ownership of your data. And when your data is been then used or sold, you really receive no compensation for it. The problems for, for data buyers are that um, there's essentially, essentially not enough interest uh, on this end to just generate more data, so it's just simply the data quantities are not large enough. That's why you see deals like pharma companies actually starting their own sequencing projects to generate data rather than you know, just buying it somewhere. Uh, accessing data is quite different. This diagram kind of illustrates this problem of fragmentation. So for a pharma company, there's really no single place they can just go to and acquire data set. There are different private public biobanks databases that they need to manually reach out to you know, just speak with the people, they'll figure out what data they have, uh, tell them what you need, negotiate pricing, and so on. And this is just a manual uh, process that is, that is very inefficient and time consuming. Um, and general lack of uh, data management capabilities that, uh, or just difficulties that is introduced by the system. For example, if genomic data must, has to be moved from those biobanks to the buyer, it, 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 it's difficult because, as I said, genomic data is big. Uh, in, internally, many, many pharma biology companies don't have, still don't have a lot of capacity to just manage a large genomic data set and analyze it properly. 